say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic on which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next thing on the agenda. Okay. Uh, the play next. Every year this time we elect new men, we elect the board, president, vice president, and uh, other uh, dignitaries. <laughs> so right now we're gonna open the nomination for president. Can't hear you, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my had to get to my mute button. Um, I'd like to nominate Stan Lee to continue as president. Can we get I'll second it. It's been first and second. We need roll call votes, Bonnie. Yes. Director Holland. Aye. If you if you would like to name who you'd like to um, as your president, name is your president. Oh, Stanley. <laughs> Me. Okay. Director Kinneberg. I'll vote for Stanley. Director Kinsler. Stanley. Director Madigan. Stanley. And Director Thibodeau. Stanley. Thank you. Thank, Thank all you of you. Congratulations. Thank you. Next will be will be Vice President. I would like to nominate Mrs. Thibodeau as Vice President. Thank I'll you. Second. And first and second, roll call votes. Director Holland. Mrs. Thibodeau. Director Kinnenberg. I'll vote for Carrie Thibodeau. Director Kinsler. Carrie. Director Madigan. Carrie. Director Thibodeau. Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm honored. And the next one will be legislator uh, program will be the next one we to nominate. Ms. I Melissa. Melissa. I'll second uh, that. Melissa said, what? Melissa, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I didn't get to say something. To be perfectly frank, I thought that this was a two-year term, so I didn't know we would need to be doing a vote, but um, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll do a roll call vote on that. Director Holland. Melissa. Director Kinnenberg. I'll vote for Melissa. Director Kinsler. I'll vote for myself, Melissa. <laughs> Director Madigan. Melissa. And Director Thibodeau. Melissa. Thank you. Congratulations, Melissa. Oh, thank thank you. you. <laughs> hey, we're all set. Okay. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Bonnie. I think you canceled the executive session. Was it canceled for today? Um, because we had already posted the agenda, we need to do a quick modification as an action item. Okay. What? We need to do an action item to have an executive session. Oh, okay. Uh, and I turned up the volume. <laughs> <laughs> so, Can we get a motion to approve the executive session agenda? It's actually to remove the executive session. I okay, think. move it. Okay, you yes. got it. Thank you. I motion to remove the executive session item from the agenda. I'll second it. The first and second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Next thing we would like to hear from community and staff. Is anybody out there? Okay, hearing none. Are we going to move on to the financial report? Marcy Bannon. This is normally a prepared by, so do right. any of you have any questions? I no. do not have any, any questions this time, Marcy. Thank you. Sure. Thorough as always. Lovely <laughs> job. Thank you. The next one will be from Lynn. Non discrimination. Any questions for Lynn? Mm -mm. This would no? be the non discrimination and affirmative action policy and procedure. Any questions? No. We do this every year, so. All right. And the next item would be 
a consent agenda item one two five. Any questions? Mm -hmm. No. Can we get a motion to approve the consent agenda as prepared? Motion to approve the consent agenda one through five as prepared. Can we get a second on that? Second. All second it. The first and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Pass. Thank you. Next are action items. The first one will be school improvement plan. Mr. Steve. He's up first. Yes, thank you. Um, a month ago, you had the opportunity to hear from principals in terms of their development of their plans. So each school kind of presented to you what their plans were entailing and how they were thinking about their goals and whatnot. This month, we present to you what the paper uh, final version of that looks like so that you could have a look at it. And the principals are available to answer any questions that you might have of any, any individual plan. I sent my questions in advance and Steve, thank you for responding. I appreciate that. Are, are you going to make a presentation about it or if we have um, compliments, comments, we do it now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we, we, thought, we thought that instead of having them uh, redo a presentation that they essentially did last month, that we give you the opportunity to use this time to just direct any questions you might have towards any of the individual plans or or uh, buildings. Well, my, my questions were already answered, but I do have some um, positive feedback. Is that okay? Great. Yeah, we, yeah, wait. We, we don't really, we don't really, yeah, we're, we're up for that. This is the, this is a perfect time for some positive feedback. Thank you. Okay. Well, um, uh, I really liked that um, Principal Ellenwood at OPS made sure that she was addressing turnover and new staff in training in the planning. I really appreciated that that was beforehand. Um, and in the high school, I really like the survey and the graph and that shows how the it's working for the students. That really helped a lot. And I like that you're asking the students directly. So that was what I wanted to say. Thanks. Thank you, Director Madigan. Yeah, I, I appreciate the thoughtfulness that went into these plans. And yeah, like Kathy, I really appreciate the high school plan and having the data there was helpful to understand where the goals were coming from. Um, I think my only comment is I really miss those conversations with you that we got to have in years past that just, you know, that one on one, we sit around the table and we talk about the why and where you're going. Um, so I want you to know that I cherish those conversations with you. And I'm sad I didn't get to have them this year. But I'm hopeful that we can do go back to that um, after COVID. Good to remember that. Yeah. I'd actually like to kind of second that that Carrie just said. I um, I didn't, um, even though they kind of already presented this to us in a rough form, um, I didn't realize that there wasn't going to be kind of a presentation of their of their plan tonight. Um, and I really enjoy um, hearing it. I guess I'm at times a more audible learner, like I absorb things yeah. a bit better when I'm hearing it. And if I can combine that with the written document, um, it really helps me absorb a little bit better. Um, but obviously you can tell the thought and the process that went into preparing these. And um, that doesn't go unrecognized um, for sure from me, but I will be glad um, when we get to have uh, more interactive conversations mm -hmm. where they can teach me what they're doing um, yeah. out there at the building level. So, yeah. 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 The how for me often includes jargon that's very familiar. You all know what you're saying, but I want to make sure I'm understanding. So, <laughs> I, I'm going to go back. I thought you were going to be presenting also. Um, so I'm going to go back through them and reread them and kind of highlight the areas that I'm not quite sure I'm understanding what you are saying. And I'll come back to you with, with some questions on that. Um, but I also wanted to say whoever, whoever, this is a new format for us this year. It's a divergence that from what we've done before and whoever prioritized the academic needs of our students with the social emotional learning that has to be a priority for us. Um, thank you. Thank you. And, and thank you to each of you for um, zeroing in on that too. 
I just want to th say thank you for all the hard work and all the thought. You can tell mm -hmm. they really put some thought in this plan. So I just want to say thank you for all the hard work. Yeah. And I, I agree with Carrie. I, I, you can't, especially now, you can't dissociate the academics from the emotional and the learning how to be responsible and engaged on your own. And I, one of the one of my questions, which I I really appreciated the answer, was about the flight skills in the high school, and including that in four credit classes, I can see that that would be really important because that while the skills should be reinforced through what happens in the class, it also acknowledges it within the class itself the importance of those skills as well as the academic skills because if you know if they're not engaged you could be the best person the best teacher in the world and it won't matter so i really appreciate that that was included in the credit classes so that um the kids could um perhaps get some credit for being responsible <laughs> yeah i really thought that uh, uh cliff and matt's take on that uh, getting the Cardinals ready to fly the nest. And so they need those flight skills to be able to do it. I thought that was a really uh, kind of a unique take on some of those uh, the social emotional uh, preparation that kids need uh, for beyond high school. I thought that was very, very creative. Yeah. Yeah, we also missed the, the round table. I, I hope when things get back to normal that we can sit down. We all, I could speak for all eight of the principals that uh, we all, we appreciate and kind of geek out and we, we like sitting together with you guys and because really yeah. they're just words and i get that i mean i have an hour presentation plan if you guys want i don't know about the other principles but um i'm sure we don't have time for that uh, but I, we we do miss that I, it's not very often i get to sit down and, and just we get to share our passion at the table with people who care and are in charge of the system so those are fun times yeah and just to echo uh cliff and and maybe reflect a little bit on your comments um we really appreciate the interest and the attention that the board has paid to instruction, um, particularly since the closure and, and, and during, uh, you know, during it, the transition with Tony. Um, and um, I remember, uh, uh, Stanley, you mentioned at a recent board meeting, not once, but a couple of times, and I think George echoed it as well. And Kathy said, absolutely. And it was like, let us know what you need. You let us know how we can support you. And we really appreciate that <clears throat> emphasis on instruction. So it doesn't really surprise me that you're like, ah, oh, dang, I would want to have that, that conversation with you. What we want to tell you, let you know, is we want you to have the information that you need to be able to uh, feel like that you can fully support what we're doing. So as you look at that and, and you know, Carrie, as you said, if, if, you, if you do have questions and you, and you don't understand things, um, I know the principals are ready and able to discuss any of those with you. You can direct it through me and I can set that up or you can, you can work directly mm -hmm. to the principals as well and, and get that, get that information from them because they can, they can actually explain it better than I can, but I can find the information out and I can, I can get it to you. But, um, yeah. I think they're, we're all vested in, in, in supporting your understanding of what we're doing, knowing that that investment uh, pays great dividends for the work we're doing. So we really appreciate that. Sure. I'd like to uh, uh, compliment Steve and the principals for doing a great job in this area. It's uh, essential that that communication go to the board. What I really want to do also is compliment the board. This is the fourth school district that I've served as a superintendent. And this is the best board in terms of providing questions to yeah. the staff prior to a board meeting rather than to create surprises at a <laughs> board meeting where we're scrambling to get the correct answer, uh, provide their appropriate research and so forth. But uh, I want to compliment this board. You've really got that down and it's really appreciated. I want you to know that. Thank you. Any other questions for Steve on uh, school improvement plan? Oh, hearing none will be careers in technology education. Steve, you're back on, on, on it again. Yes, uh, we have the career technology education plan that was presented to you uh, by director, uh, Dr. Matthew Carlson III. 
Um, and he's all geared up with his headset and his microphone to take any uh, questions you might have regarding the plan. Uh, before he does that, um, you know, we, I presented the CTE plan uh, for this is my fourth time of presenting it. This is literally the first time where we've had a plan that shows not just a plan for this year, but a multi-year plan. And that was something mm -hmm. that Matt made happen in a very short time. Um, you can see the details, the multi-year details tied to it. Um, it gives us the ability to see the trajectory of what we're doing with CTE. Uh, and that is, uh, that's, that's significantly different than, uh, that makes this year very unique in terms of this presentation. So I just wanna compliment Matt um, and uh, it just what he's done, you know, how he's dived in and, and uh, not just to improve the plan, but made the community connections on the advisory board that were loose and kind of fragmented and has brought industry back into the fold uh, for looking at what uh, our CTE services are for our kids. And he's just done an, a tremendous job of leading this process and uh, combined with uh, the work that Kevin has done at OMS and these mm -hmm. two have just partnered together uh, on this in terms of the uh, 612 program. It's very, very impressive. And, uh, and but if you have questions, they're actually both there uh, to respond to any questions you might have about the plan. Well, I just have some feedback. I'm kind of disappointed. I was hoping to see Cliff and Matt in their ugly sweaters after I saw them. <laughs> Those were great. <laughs> it was character day today. Uh, Matt was Clark and I was Cousin Eddie, but we chose to change prior to this meeting. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Well, I career CTE courses and the CTE support we give our students has been um, an important priority of mine since being on the board. And Steve, like you, I was so excited to see not just a vision of where we're going, but how that looks in application. Like when are we going to update the culinary facilities for the students and how that relates to um, you know, some of the technology purchases, the new photography equipment, and, and to see it all laid out over multiple years, A, it made me very proud to know that we're serving our students and thinking progressively about what their needs are going to be in the years to come. But also it made me feel, um, as a board member, more confident in our plan because we have those big strategic changes scheduled out. So it's not like we have to approve this you know, historical budget for all of these things to occur in year one. They're they're phased in thoughtfully. And um, it was just great to see. And I'm sure the plan will evolve and maybe it will change because different needs come up at different times than I believe. But I liked the cohesiveness of the plan and the thoughtfulness in putting it together. And having the middle school kids included in that vision is huge, huge, because they're already thinking about it. They're thinking about what's next and what they're going to do with their life, and they want to see how that works. And so whatever we can do um, to get the middle school kids on board and engaged with the CTE options that they have, um, I'm all for it. So thank you for the work that went into that. That was a lot of blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so excited about it, so thank you. Um, I, I really appreciated how, how well written it was and how um, the future thinking that, that was so great to see it all laid out. I'm really glad that it's also connected with state organizations to the classes. I didn't realize that. I was really impressed with that um, because that provides a natural reinforcement and a path of inquiry for the kids. So I really appreciate that. And I loved the dual credit math, the consumer <laughs> math. <laughs> yeah, I would have liked that one. Um, and I like that you connected the professional development for the teachers to access to professional organizations. I mean, you know, they, they need that to be able to expand their horizons. I mean, it, it's great that we can connect them instead of, um, like I found out on my own that there was a National Social Studies <laughs> Council, you know? It, it's great to offer to, to 
and be able to tell our teachers that there's these things that can enrich them and provide that avenue. So it helps the teachers and always then it helps the kids. So thank you. Any more comments? Um, Hearing that, we're gonna move right on to Lynn with the lease agreements. Thank so you, Stanley. If I, if, I, if I could just close that sure. piece just real quick. Um, and I think, Bonnie, is, is this an action item? It is, and the simple oh. item too. So if we can go back and. Okay, we'll do both of those back. But I just wanted to just uh, state for the sake of the principals, um, as you guys have heard from Tony with the governor's proclamation yesterday, that just kind of turned everybody's worlds upside down. These guys have been navigating a, a myriad of communication uh that they're not really quite been ready to uh navigate so they've had a very very long day with staff and dealing with all that so i just want to thank them for coming tonight and being available for answering questions and whatnot like that you're welcome to stay if you'd like to but uh i also know it's been a super long day and and thank you guys for for participating yeah thank you thanks for all thank the work you do thank you. thanks guys so we're going to move back to the first one of school improvement plan we need to get a, a first and a second in the vote and to approve i will move to approve the school improvement plans as presented i'll second it i've been first and second all in favor aye, aye. 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 opposed pass thank you we're also going to move on to the next one would be the the uh my glasses are so dirty. It's careers in technology education. <laughs> These masses, you got to keep pushing them up. <laughs> so we need to make a motion on that to approve that. I will motion to approve the career and technical education program. Second. The first and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Pass. Thank you. Now we're at Lynn, lease agreements. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, tonight I'm asking for your action on the annual renewal of leases on three of our properties. Uh, it's the Ording Senior Center located at the Transportation Building and the Ording Family Support Center located um, at, again, at the, the Transportation Building and our um, the SGEO Soccer Club that uses the, the fields on Orville, uh, Orville Road East. Any questions about those? And this is Can an I get a motion item. to approve the lease agreement. Yes. I move to approve the lease agreements. Second. Can we get a second? I mean, first and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank Pass. Thank you. Thank you. Keep passing that. Keep passing that soccer field one because I'm, I'm getting up there, so I don't want to be mowing, mowing grass all day at <laughs> the Lions Club. <laughs> <laughs> So Marv, I don't want to take over yet. <laughs> All righty. The next one would be uh, student reps. We got any student reps available? Yeah, Amber's Give here. Hey, Amber. All right. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello, Hello. Amber. Hello. <laughs> so I guess I'll just share um, a bunch of current events going on right now. So right now we're having our spirit week which is, um, I have the days pulled up real quick. I'll read them to you. So Monday, we wore festive pajamas. Tuesday was holiday accessories. So that meant, or that means like hats, lights, uh, socks, et cetera. Um, then Wednesday was ugly slash festive sweater. Thursday was our favorite holiday character. And then tomorrow is going to be snow day. So we're basically just dressing up in like hats, snows, snows, scarves, and like big <laughs> coats. As if it snowed. Um, and then um, we are also doing a winter wishes event. So it's basically every like student gets a gift from the school or they can donate it to like a teacher or a family or just somebody they know in need. So like also another student. And then maybe a week ago, I believe, um, NHS hosted a food drive for the food bank which I participated in, and it was so fun. It made me feel all warm and happy. <laughs> that's that's all I got, honestly. 
<laughs> I wanted to um, just comment a little bit here, Amber, about that food drive that you did. Um, we had, um, I don't know, one of the students that lived up here in our neighborhood and they posted it on our neighborhood blotter. And I heard that they collected so much food, they couldn't fit anymore in their trucks. So fabulous wow. job. Awesome. So my box of food is awesome. left on my porch to take awesome. care of by myself, but that's okay. <laughs> awesome. All righty. That's fantastic. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Amber. Today, they need it. Next, we we'll move on the board comments. Any comments from the board? I have a comment that's more of a question. Sure. And I, I apologize, Tony, I didn't get it to you in advance, but I'm pretty sure that it's something that's in your wheelhouse today. Um, with the governor making his surprise announcement, um, the impression that a lot of our, our district parents get, got is that we can now open the school tomorrow. But my question is, since it's really the Tacoma Pierce County Health District that's put the hurdles in place for us to reopen, have they revised their guidance at all, or do we still have to pass all of their hurdles to open? And thus, the governor's announcement is a pretty pretty meaningless thing. Well, you know, I I I agree that last night's uh, presentation by the governor caught us all by surprise. It was absolutely um, um, somewhat breathtaking and unanticipated, of course. Um, fortunately, today we had an opportunity as Pierce County superintendents to meet with uh, Bruce Dameyer and uh, talk with him about vaccine distribution. We also talked with Dr. Chen and um, it was really helpful to hear from them. What we did learn is that there is no plan at this time to uh, stage the uh, various recipients by occupation uh, that will receive the vaccine. And uh, apparently there is some planning that is under, underway, but there is no written plan uh, that lays out the groundwork when we can expect, for instance, our educators to receive a vaccine. And when our uh, 16 and older students can receive the vaccine as well. So there is no plan at this time. We do know that uh, suddenly the governor set the number of infections at 350 infections per 100,000. And that I found to be an extraordinarily high number. But he also said something very carefully in that school district boards of directors can determine the level of infections per 100,000 in terms of its operating schools. I asked Dr. Chen, is there an upper limit? Is it 450, 550 per 100,000? Is it 650? Can the infections run rampant? What will the Pierce County Health Department do if it exceeds 350 and up? He just said it's up to the board of directors of each school district to determine the level of infections per 100,000 in terms of its safe operation of schools. So the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department will not weigh in as it has in the past with setting limits. So the burden and responsibility rests with local school boards. Um, I have, uh, we have as a district, um, some dated plans that uh, need to be dusted off and resurfaced. We have a great deal of information to cover, but really the, the governor couldn't have found a, a worse time to make an announcement on the reopening of schools and to do it just at the time when we're going to move into winter break and staff will be scattered and people have plans. So our work, even though we're going to 
try to pull some people together to do some planning uh, in the next uh, 10 days. Uh, people are largely gone. And more importantly, our principals don't have their leadership teams at the various schools in our district to help with the planning. Our teachers, our classified staff need to be a part of the discussions of planning as we move to reopen schools. We also have to spend time talking with our union leadership about the details on the reopening of schools. We also need to hire back our classified staff that was furloughed. We have a tremendous number of steps to take prior to moving and settling on a final plan that we can present to the board, uh, possibly as early as mid-January. But we have a lot of uh, a lot of areas to cover to determine uh, whether or not we can safely open up our schools because we don't want to make any mistakes. We want to open up and have it be a smooth operation. In fact, I would suggest that we have a dress rehearsal uh, or a practice run prior to the first day of school where we get all hands on deck and we operate, minus the students, we operate and have a, um, uh, a practice run on simulation on what that day will look like. Uh, I think that we can leave no stone unturned as we begin to serve our community. But yes, George, I do understand that parents want schools to open immediately, but we have staff that need to uh, make arrangements for childcare. We uh, um, have to emphasize that uh, our uh, principals need to work with staff and get buy-in. We need to work with our union leadership and so I also want to enter into some conversation with the board. Just exactly, will the board decide to have limitations on the number of infections per 100,000 before we close a school? That would be something that we can talk about at a later date. But uh, we, uh, we have some significant conversations to take place with a multitude of people. I did have a conversation with a prominent citizen in our community who reached out to me and, and wondered just exactly what plans the district has. And uh, rather than to email back or text, I uh, phoned this individual and we had a great conversation and she understands the complexities on the reopening of schools. And I'm hoping that other families, other parents take the time to understand that this is a big moving organization. And we can't just snap our fingers and start school overnight. It, it is, so there's a lot of moving parts that are required to uh, smoothly fit together. And uh, at this time, we're, we're, we have a lot, of, a lot of important work to do and we need to engage a number of people in those conversations to make sure that we uh, take flight and implement this uh, reopening without any flaws. Uh, Follow-up question for you, Tony. Um, do, does the health district break down positivity rates by location? Because I have to be honest, if I'm gonna end up making a decision, I'm gonna be more interested in our cases in Ording than I am in the larger Pierce County? I think that's a great question, George. I don't have the answer to you, but as a follow-up, I will make contact with the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department and see if we can uh, have them isolate those uh, that positivity uh, rate uh, by districts in Pierce County. That would be really helpful. helpful. Thank you very much. You bet. Um, I, besides not having any assistance with the planning or that, is there any assistance with the finances for the PPE and the testing? And um, is there any future planning about vaccines and the educational community? You know, or is this just, ta-da, you're, you're on, go to, for it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Kathy, I, I just I wish there was a uh, some painstaking uh, preparations that that uh, I could I could point to at this time. 
but uh, as you know, I, I led off the uh, conversation here that there is no plan in place and we're all waiting for that to surface soon. Uh, we have a lot of people who uh, want to know and want to know soon. And uh, again, you know, we, we need to ask our staff, uh, which staff are planning to come back in person, which staff may have a, a medical uh, complication that prevents them from coming to in-person instruction. Uh, those would be medically uh, verified, of course, of course. But we also uh, have parents that I that I believe uh, are also concerned about sending their children to school with high infection rates. Um, so we have a we have a, a a lot of conversations and and communications that need to go out. And still, we probably will won't be able to answer everybody's question as soon as they would like, but we'll do our very best to communicate with all of our constituents as soon as possible. Hey, Tony, one more comment on that. Other districts, you know, around the country are sharing dashboards with infection rates with both staff and students. And um, if we were able to do something like that, I think it would be I mean, the spirit of transparency helpful for parents as they're making their decisions. If, you know, as we're encouraging people to send their children back to school um, if they feel safe and as long as we are ready to open school, um, it might be helpful to have not just ordering numbers from the county, but um, specifically district numbers too might be helpful as long as we can protect confidentiality for both staff and students. That's a great point. We'll uh, endeavor to get that information uh, in the hands of our community. Absolutely. Um, and you might not have an answer for this. So if there is, like um, you were saying, if there is an infection, uh, an outbreak in a class and you want to know if there's other people in the class that are also ill, um, is the school district going to do the testing? Who does the testing? We, we don't have uh, the logistical uh, yes. support system in place to do such a thing. Yes. Uh, so we're, we're left on our own. Oh. And uh, I imagine we, depending upon how widespread the uh, infections are and the capabilities of Tacoma Pierce County Health Department and their resources, uh, they could be strained to uh, uh, provide those services on a first come first serve basis in it it may be they may be spread thin uh, at this time i i don't have uh the the resources in place for such a follow-up no i i understand that i think that a lot of people think that because they said that we can open up that ta -da, we're, we're that, there it is when there's a lot of logistic logistics to this and there's a lot of expense or possible expense yeah. You're absolutely correct. And responsibility. I, I just think we got to make sure we we communicate to the community what's going on, what steps are we yes. doing. Keep yeah. them involved. These are the things we're doing because, like you said, these parents think just throwing a switch and we back we back to school. These are the things that has to get done before we can open the doors. And also being able to say um, kind of the why nots. I mean, we all um, we all can have our own individual ideas. I have a whole slew of reasons why we can't rush back into school, but being able to present those to the community too. It's like, yes, we, the board, Tony, you, all, everybody at the school has been chomping at the bit to get these kids back into these buildings. There's not a single one of us that has said, no, I'm happy with it like this. Let's just keep going this route. And so, so that's um, the reasons why we haven't taken the steps to get the kids back in school is almost just as important to tell them why not as to how we're going to do that. Why doesn't it work right now? Um, I read in part of Inslee's um, uh, presentation or whatever the heck you call that, that there was something about filtration systems. And, and I remember a conversation early on that we had about um, our filters yeah. didn't meet the requirements. So that was a roadblock. And if the community doesn't know we have these kinds of roadblocks 
you know, it just looks like we're putting our, our feet in the ground and refusing to move forward. When in fact, there are expensive issues that our buildings cannot handle for whatever reasons. And some of those things would be great to have out there. We need money to do some of that stuff. Can we get that from the state? I don't know. Do we need to run a bond measure? I don't know. But you know, there's are there are obviously very physical things um, that prevent us from being where we'd like to be for our kids, and just putting those out there um, for people to know why not, why doesn't this work? Would sure. be just as good. Yeah. Thank um, you. Just as helpful. Yeah, thank you, Melissa, uh, Lynn Rosalini, and Curtis Naibo, and I had a recent conversation with regard to our air quality assessment, and uh, the good news is. is well, the bad news is, is that uh, conducting an assessment is very expensive and private vendors can uh, seek top dollar. Uh, Curtis and Lynn have come up with a plan in which we have the testing equipment and we can conduct it ourselves. So at a tremendous cost savings. So I, I'm, I'm just really uh, helpful, uh, hopeful that we will be able to get that done uh, over the next month or two and be able to conduct a thorough assessment. But needing to report that out to our community is as important as conducting the test. So uh, it, it's a two-pronged effort, that's for sure. So Tony, one, one piece that's uh, probably really good uh, to speak to the board communication-wise, what you shared with me today, because this might trickle back to the board as well, because we had a staff are hearing the governor's proclamation and are wondering, what does that mean? And principals are not really in a position to directly answer all those questions because we're we're not, you know, we do haven't had enough time to turn around on it. So Tony uh, communicated with me earlier today to make sure that the message went out through principals to staff that they know that there will be no decisions made about this during break, and that when we come back from break, we will be involving all the appropriate staff in the continued planning of this process. So. Um, I don't know if you'll hear from staff members in the community that are anxious about what this means to them, but we can say with confidence that uh, they can enjoy their break and not worry. There's not going to be anything that's going to be different uh, from between they leave now and when they come back. But when they come back, and I think, Tony, you kind of phrased it really well, take, take some time off. You're going to need it because uh, when we come back, it's, we've got a lot of work to do. But we will involve uh, the unions, building leadership teams. Um, all the appropriate parties in the planning. Uh, there will be some K-12 uh, system decisions that will need to be made at probably principal and cabinet level, but where it kind of fits into uh, people's daily lives in the buildings, where it's unique to the buildings, they'll be involved in that planning process. So it won't be, uh, there'll be so much of it that won't be top down. It'll be collaborative. And I think that's important that staff, that hopefully the principals will communicate that to them. I've asked them to do that. But in case it comes back to you, um, people miss the communication. You can say that with confidence to them. Thank you, Steve. Well said. Um, one, o one other thing I'd like to um, pile onto this conversation is when you get ready to um, have a plan that you're going to bring to us or that we as a board, if, if we're supposed to set any kind of um, rate ceiling or whatever, I would really appreciate having um, available the risk management people. Um, I know that I've kind of asked over and over again, well, can we, can we do this or can we do that? And they've just been very non-committal. Um, so what, <laughs> everybody's non-committal right now, but um, <laughs> so what kind of, uh, what kind of a protection or insurance, you know, are they going to um, give us or not give us? What, what do we need to consider in that arena as well? Oh, it's, it's a very complicated um, series of requirements and guidelines that we must adhere to. And they will be very, very careful to scrutinize the actions of the school district. They may uh, set um, in writing some uh, expectations and requirements, and they will make sure that the school district crosses every T and dots every I in fulfilling those requirements for insurance coverage purposes. So yes, we will, um, we will be working closely. In fact, uh, Marcy Bannon 
uh, sent out a uh, most recent updated um, risk management set of guidelines that we'll we'll study as well. So there are numerous pieces that are a part of this reopening plan that need to be studied and considered and evaluated. Uh, and we must be prepared for all the things that are coming at us. Yeah. So Tony, do we want to in, in any way involve the task force in that that really helped with the public information aspect of um, when we could reopen school, you know, when we had it in the summer and when we had it last spring, because there's so much information. Yes, I'm glad you asked that uh, question and suggested that. I was uh, working with Bonnie today and we have tentatively scheduled the uh, next task force meeting to be on January, Tuesday, January 12th. We meet on Tuesdays in the past. And so we will, uh, we said that uh, several weeks ago, said that we will, we will uh, meet again on an as needed basis and as needed has just arrived. Yeah. <laughs> We might want to let them know ahead of time so they don't think we're ignoring them. You know, I mean, like letting them know sooner right. than later. Yeah, letting them know they're included in the process. Yes. Will do. Will do. Great. Any other questions? No. I just I have a thousand questions. <laughs> I do too. But I'm just going to say buckle up because. I, <laughs> right. It's going to be um, enjoy your holiday week and then yeah. buckle up. It's going to be a roller coaster and it's going to be a mess and we're going to make nobody happy and everybody happy all at once. And um, I'm learning to um, take criticism without taking it personally, um, which is a new one for me. That's what I learned in 2020. So <laughs> I just want everybody there at, at the district and my fellow board members to know that I appreciate everything. Um, yes, yeah, exactly. everything <laughs> hard, hard work and there's gonna be nothing, um, nothing that's going to go smoothly. Um, even when we all want it to go well, it's just, it's, I, I, just, I see a mess and a lot of, um, sleepless nights ahead worrying about the what ifs. Well, I, you know, I, I've been told by Holly that I've got a real fan club on Facebook. So I just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, Strap in ourselves, strap ourselves in the seat and get ready for a wild ride. Yeah. That's one one heck of a roller coaster ride we'll be on. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. What is it? Buckle up. You're in for a stormy night. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kathy, for the warning. Any, any other comments from the board? So I think we then. The second sessions have been removed. Um Anything else for the board, or the half of the board? None? I'd like y'all to have a good night and buckle up. <laughs> yeah. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, Merry Christmas. <laughs>